Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Jim Bainter, and he is WA7VKZ. Okay, and he asks a deceptively simple question. It's actually got quite a bit of an answer. Why are four to one balance wound with two bifilar windings forming an auto transformer rather than two winding transformer? Uh, primary and a center tap, secondary uh, center tap um, used to draw off static charge. This would lessen the capacitance between the input and the output windings. Um, before we jump into this, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Thomas Dale, who is a recent patron of this channel. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's dive into those balance. First of all, understand that uh, balance have been around for a very long time, um, decades, many decades. And there is a lot of uh, tradition in there. And so people tend to do things because that's kind of the way they've always done things. Okay. Now, um, note first before we dive into this that there are two kinds of balance. Uh, well, three. Three, really, if you count uh, choke balance. There are voltage balance where the voltage on the output is balanced so it, it goes positive, negative, switches to positive, negative, and that voltage is the same between the two contacts. And then there are current balance, where the current going out each side, swapping back and forth, is the same. Voltage doesn't matter so much, okay? Now, I know the MFJ2010, which is the reference station antenna, uh, has a current balance. Uh, that uh, goes out to the antenna itself. It's fed at the two-thirds point of the antenna. Works quite well, which is why it's been selected as the reference antenna. So, uh, and by reference, of course, you can put any antenna out there you want up, but if you don't know what to start with, start with that. It costs less than $100. It is 66 feet long, although, of course, you can run it in sort of a zigzag, whatever, to uh, get a little space out of it. So let's talk about voltage balance. Uh, there's two basic kinds. Uh, one that's actually a transformer. And uh, well, let's see, I, I mentioned current balance. There's also the, the uh, so-called choke balance, which is just a way to keep the balance currents from flowing back toward the transmitter. We're going to talk about voltage balance, and we're going to talk about uh, voltage balance as a transformer balance, okay? Now, there are two fundamental ways of doing this. First of all, let's look at requirements. It has to be a balance, meaning balanced to unbalanced. In this case, the unbalanced is the feed, and the balanced is the output. If we don't do this right, we end up with a bal bal. Uh, we change the impedance, but the, it's balanced on both sides. Um, and so what we want to do is make sure that we have a, uh, a nice, um, true balance to where it's very easily unbalanced where the coax comes in and very easily balanced when it comes out. Let's draw some diagrams. Okay, let's take a toroid core and just represent it as a, a winding like this. Remember any going through the hole coming out. So if you take this donut like this, okay, if you have a turn go through the center, that counts as one turn, okay? So they come out and then they go back around and through. There's uh, two ways of doing this. I'm just going to represent this uh, core this way. We use a ferrite core with this. You can find more details in the uh, handbook. 
the ARRL uh, handbook. But uh, what we have here is two or three windings. And this is the center conductor for the coax. And here is the um, uh, ground, ground side, the, the shield. Okay, so this is the unbalanced side. Then over here we have a bunch of coils. Seven, uh, let's see, for four to one, it would be two times what's over here. So if there's two turns here, there are one, two, three, four, um, four turns here. Okay, so the turns ratio is two to one, and the impedance ratio is two squared to one squared um, equals um, uh, four to one, so that's how a four to one balance is made. This is a way you can do it. Now, you want to bleed the static charge off the antenna. What is usually done, there's a couple different ways you can do this, but often it's just connected straight over like that. Now, is this balanced? Um, yeah, it will turn out that way. Um, Another way that you can do that is to come up here to the center, okay? And uh, then the thing rotates around that, and you've got a static path right here where this is going to be zero because this is ground. Of course, nothing is perfect in any of this, and it can throw it off a little bit. Now, let me tell you how they're primarily made. We'll just draw the core right here, and we're going to do two turns, okay, and then we're going to go three, four, and this we're going to take out over here, and um, this we're going to take out over here, okay. This is an auto transformer. Uh, auto transformers are okay as far as uh, things go, here's your balanced output like this. Another way to do this, which will probably work just as well. Okay, we've got one, two, and this is the hot or the plus, and this is the ground, and then go like um, like this. Okay. And then this becomes the hot minus. And this will go over here to out. And this goes over here to out. Now here we are taking the ground out of the middle. Now the problem, there isn't a problem uh, doing this. This is fine. Um, so this is the shield, and this is the center down here. And of course, this isn't connected to the coax at all. But there are multiple ways that you can do these. Now, the ARRL makes a 49 to 1 ballon kit. And the way this is wound is got your winding here. You've got one, two, and then you have another winding that is connected here, and these are wound together. But this red one then goes on up here for to make a 49 to 1, which means a 7 to 1 voltage. Okay, so these are loosely wound around each other, which is what is often referred to as by filar. So it means two windings closely together. So this goes to ground, 
as does the red. Of course, red comes out the other side. And this is the, the ground side over here. And then this blue one comes out over, well, it is blue now. Um, whereas this, this and this are not connected. Okay, they're wound around each other, but that is not connected. It's up like this. Now, this is a true transformer, but these are wound around each other and they go twice around the core. Now, to answer a question that's come up in other situations, why just two windings? Um, if you're going to go for lower frequencies, you're gonna want three windings in there, but uh, two windings may actually overheat the core if you put a lot of power to it. So if you do this for 40 meters when you Extend it so you can go 80. You've got to be careful not to overheat the core. Um, as you go up in frequency, you need fewer windings through the core. Okay. It's, there's a definite relationship between the number of windings, the permeability of this thing, and the saturation level, and so on, which is all best left to transformer designers. But there you have it. You've got two windings. These connect here, and then this out here is the so-called hot side, but um, these are balanced. Okay, these are balanced. These are not over here. Now, that may sound a little bit weird. So what we're doing is it's uh, these bifilar. It simply means two windings very close together, um, and the capacitance between them can help satisfy some of the issues with the inductance of the coil and so on. Okay, this is the way the 49 to 1 ARRL transformer is wound. The way that my um, Ballon designs 4 to 1 Ballon is wound is an auto transformer 1, 2, 3, 4, so this is marked as positive, this is marked as negative, this is the 50 ohm, and this is the 400 ohm. We take the turns ratio, which is 2 to 1, square it, 2 squared equals 4, so we have 4 to 1. 1 raised to any power is 1, including to the zeroth power, by definition. Okay, so I think that helps answer that question. Okay, so uh, Jim, the bottom line here is that there are lots and lots and lots of ways of making successful balance. Uh, you can make them as bal bal if you need to, uh, like to change from a 450 ohm feed line to 50 ohm antenna, you'd use a 9 to 1 balance, uh, and so on. Voltage balance are often done with auto transformers. Uh, it just makes things easier, I guess, to build. The uh, ARRL 49 to 1 Ballon is not done as a uh, auto transformer, but rather there's actually a separate winding for the primary. Uh, and it's done with a bifilar winding. You can look in the section on practical inductors and find out why that's the case. There's also sections in the book on transformers, RF transformers, and things like that. Um, if you've ever been in an airplane and you put on your headphones and you hear kind of a high-pitched sound, um, what you are listening to is the generator uh, running at, not at 60 hertz, but at 400. The reason for the 400 is because the higher you go in frequency, the smaller the transformers have to be. And by the time you get up to HF, just two turns through one of those cores is plenty. Some use three turns, okay? But you have to maintain the turns ratio, uh, whatever you do. And by the time you get up into UHF and VHF, you do actually get to half turn coils. And things like that. It's really uh, weird. You just make those right on the circuit board. 
Uh, it's kind of interesting, but inductance is inductance regardless of the frequency at which it's needed. Okay, now, so um, there are different ways that you can do balance. You can do it completely without connecting the two sides. But like you say, you would want to bleed off the static charge. So you could do, as you say, take the center of the conductor, take it down to the ground lead on the other side, and do that too. That works too. A lot of these different ways works. This is why a lot of people design their own balance. Uh, various companies make balance. One of the biggest that makes the heaviest balance is Ballon Designs. Uh, you can look at what they have. Those are, oh, gee, they're workhorses. Those things will withstand kilowatts of power. So, uh, if any of you watching would like to help support this channel financially, please go to dcastler.com slash support. Also, I would like to point out that when my channel was hacked, a lot of subscribers got dropped from their subscriptions. Go back and check to make sure that you are subscribed. You can do this on the uh, desktop computer by just looking at where you have the small picture and you can see the text underneath. You'll see a button that either says subscribe or subscribed. If it does not have the past tense of that, go ahead and subscribe again. It makes things uh, easier. You know, uh, the hacking was pretty thorough. There's some things that just won't ever get uh, uh, fixed, but we'll deal with it as best we can. So, and of course, I've done many things to make the account far more secure. So, until we next meet, 73. <music>